you would never would have heard of it. And to, to hear it from the mouths of the people who were there um, was uh, eye-opening for the whole country if they listened. Hey, welcome back to the Chesterfield. I'm your host, Ben Rayner. And I'm Isque. Each week on the Chesterfield, we'll connect with a great Canadian artist to talk about the Canadian culture that shaped their lives. And we'll explore the impact of that Canadian artwork on the world. Now, if you're a regular viewer, you know that the Chesterfield is produced by Friends of Canadian Broadcasting. Friends is a non-profit citizens group that fights for a strong CBC, local news, and telling our own stories. Hollywood and Silicon Valley and Netflix and Amazon Prime and the like are so powerful these days, we need to stand up for our own culture to keep it alive. So visit IamCanCon.ca for more details. Here in the Chesterfield, as you know, we talk about the CBC from time to time, and this week I'm going to do just that. I'm going to talk about Canada's public broadcaster with West Coast punk rocker Saint Paré Art Bergman. Now, art's been standing up for what's right and kicking against the pricks through the rock and roll music since almost the birth of punk rock. I think his first album came out in 1978. He's got a new album called Late Stage Empire Dementia, which is a great title. And he also has a new single called Christo Fascist. Um, and we have a clip of that just to give you an idea of what this wonderful, cranky old punk rocker is all about. I should, I should mention too that, that Art Bergman was just appointed to the Order of Canada, which is pretty much the most punk rock thing the Order of Canada has ever done. Yeah, no kidding. I love that he also talks about how much uh, Canadian broadcasting has been integral for his career. Because I can, I can absolutely relate to that lack of channels or outlets when you are an artist that's sort of, you know, off the mark in any way or not quintessentially mainstream, you know, where do we go? What do we do? No, I, I mean, I mean like, he, art's never gotten rich doing this. He's, he's the very definition of someone who does, does this for the right reasons. And because he has to, not because there are any real commercial ambitions. You know, he's, he's 68 years old and I don't think he's sitting on a big pile of money out there in rural Alberta. But he's still making music and he's, he's still comfortingly Crabby and, and a bit of an intimidating figure, but we, we go back quite a ways. Like, like we've, we've developed a rapport over the years. Oh, awesome. Well, I hope you have a wonderful conversation. Me too. Let's see if we can get him on the line from wherever he is out in rural Alberta. Hello, Art Bergman. Welcome to the Chesterfield. It's nice to see your face again. I, I, I got used to seeing you around town here when you lived in Toronto. So it's, 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 uh, it's nice to reconnect. I have to congratulate you on your recent appointment to the Order of Canada, which is probably the most punk rock thing the Order of Canada has ever done. I must feel a little, must have felt a little weird to get that call. Uh, very strange to get that call. Um, Phil Clego at WeWork got, it, got the call first. He's putting out the new record as well as having put out the apostate, but... Um, he had me call the, the Emma Grace from uh, the Governor General's office to see if it was really happening in it, and it was. And they asked me to accept right there on the phone, and, and I just did it. So here we are. And uh, now I'm wondering who got abused in that office for me to get that award. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what the actual story is well i i think it's actually uh it's it's kind of on brand a little bit that you know you got the order of canada from a discredited governor general i feel like that works <laughs> yeah yeah i'm trying to suss out how, how the the whole organization works now like is this like a a colonial knighthood or 
have a similar vibe, like as to knighthoods in England, it's connected to the monarchy. Um, do I really want to be involved with this or, or as a joke, as, as a Monty Python kind of thing? <laughs> but I, I, I'll see, see where it rolls from here. You want to see the bobble? I do. Oh, man, There's that's kind of chintzy. <laughs> Cufflinks? <laughs> no, they're pins you wear on your lapel. I, lo I look forward to you playing shows with those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As you probably also know, we, you know we, we ask everyone who's a guest on this, this, this program to give us a piece of Canadian culture that kind of cast a long shadow over their life or their art. And their art, so to speak. And yeah. you kind of played right into our hands when you did an interview with As It Happens, I believe, um, on CBC Radio after getting the Order of Canada and talked a little bit, or at least tweaked, tweaked our interest by, by saying that you had been, quote, and I quote, radicalized by shows like As It Happens in recent years, um, which I find interesting for two reasons, because I, I didn't think that Art Bergman needed further radicalization uh, late, later in life. And uh, B, I don't picture you necessarily as the kind of guy who's sort of sitting home in his kitchen listening to CBC radio. Are you, are you an avid CBC radio listener? Uh, yeah, I listen. I usually listen to As It Happens just about every day. Um, a lot of CBC when I'm doing all the housework, you know. But uh, I got sick of it after a while. But the, the, the thing is, after the Truth and Reconciliation commission ran its course in its 96 recommendations you had cbc come on board with uh, the shows reclaimed unreserved and such great shows learning about uh, indigenous music from all over the world and uh, life for indigenous people across this country country and with the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, you had um, and missing and murdered in, uh, Indigenous women at inquiries. This was given a lot of coverage on CBC and uh, most Canadians, including me. I mean, I knew there, had, there was a genocide that happened, but the ongoing uh, repercussions of those years over a century of this genocide um, I really didn't know the details of until this came out and uh, with the ongoing ongoing shows and and uh, Murray Sinclair who ran the uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission was on a, on a lot on uh, CBC and uh, and uh, it was just brutal to learn about uh, exactly what happened in, in residential schools and how they ran up until the, some of them up until the 90s and hearing the testimony from uh, all those people and for CBC to continue to air this work and to have indigenous shows on now is, um, I mean, uh, an awesomely uh, terrifying thing to learn uh, what this country did you would never would have heard of it, and to to hear it from the mouths of the people who were there um, was uh, eye opening for the whole country if they listened. No, it's I well that's <laughs> the ugly truth about Canada, right? And it's I I, I think you I think you said Canada is a, a work in progress, and and the late Gord Downey too, uh, um, uh, who also you know. Uh, became uh, highly concerned with with bringing indigenous issues, particularly residential schools, to light uh, late in life. He always said, "Canada, where it's like you know, we're a fake country. We're not a complete country because we don't include everybody." And I think CBC is a big part of that. But that should be its job, right? That <laughs> that that is the job of public broadcaster is to kind of include everybody. It's the public. Yes, of course. And didn't Gord Downey? Uh make uh, Justin Trudeau make a promise 
to give the people clean water. And so we have to remind Justin of this uh, uh, continually, I think, till it happens. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a little, it's, uh, <laughs> he's a little late with that one. It's a national crime. Talking about public radio, I would, I first heard you because I lived in rural New Brunswick growing up and we didn't have any cool radio stations. You had to drive like an hour to get to a cool record shop. Um, and it was shows like Brave New Waves and Nightlines on CBC that would play music like Art Bergman. And I, I would think, you know, maybe much music back in the day, I'd see the video for a final cliche or something. But, but you know, there, there are very few avenues for someone who's not making commercial music, right, to, to, get their, to get their music out there. So how important, I mean, was that one of the main sources of exposure for, for your music? I would, I would think they've, they've allowed you in some part to have a career in Canada. Well, they could they could play uh, my music a little more often because I'm not making a a living off the CBC uh, like some people are. Um, Kathleen, she make, <laughs> it's in her song <laughs> "Royalties from the CBC." I'm not there yet, so uh, please play me more once a week. We should do it. Were you, were you growing up, were you kind of a, a news junkie? I know your dad was, uh, I knew you were like kind of a junior pamphleteer for your dad at times, but were you, were you always, you know, was the radio always on in your house? Were you guys always up to date on what was going on? It seems like your dad was pretty engaged. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, news junkie all the time, paper from front to back. But uh, now with this crazy internet world I, I i have to turn it off now and just i've gone back to the cbc occasionally but uh i'm gonna quit twitter and uh, it doesn't uh, change a damn thing and uh you just feel you feel like you're shouting into a massive garbage can of vitriol well, it's funny you mentioned reading a newspaper back to front because I am a refugee of the newspaper industry and and I, it's increasingly hard to find a paper to read front to back, you know, because of things like Twitter and Facebook, which are which are gobbling up all the advertising. Right. So it's these it's harder and harder to access news. I guess that's one, why something like an as it happens is important, because there's very few other national outlets, you know, th to get the word out on, on what's actually happening. You know what I mean? Like I, you see it in the States. You see what happens when nobody's reading or watching the news, right? Well, yeah, well if you're a news junkie like me and you, and you see one item and then there's a million comments after it, uh, I started reading uh, everything. And it's like one, one sentence from everybody in the world. And, uh, I just can't keep up with that kind of editorializing. <laughs> You'd think, because what you play, especially like the, the, your later stuff, is pretty straightforward rock and roll. It's not like screeching hardcore or anything. And if a rock radio station was really interested in playing rock and roll, it should be playing Art Bergman. But it's, it's so weird that there's this gap. And it's, and it's narrower and narrower as, as you know, uh, corporate conglomerates own all the radio stations across Canada, the, the programming becomes more homogenous. So I, it, it gets harder and harder. It should be easier, right, at this moment in time for artists to get their music out there. But it, but it isn't. You know, the, the, there's less, fewer and fewer portals, I think. It should be easy. I've been accused of sounding like Tom Petty, so it shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> it's like so M.O.R. sometimes, but... Uh... Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to scream anymore. I did use to scream. So maybe that may, got me some play on, uh, some odd college radio programs, but, uh, I also play a talking kind of ballads, which, uh, I don't know uh, where, where to place the songs. I'm kind of becoming singular in that way. This is just Art Bergman and he does this. And so, you know, I, I was trying to funny. find my own category. It's funny. I was thinking that I was listening to the new record again this morning. And I find like the, 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 we were the two, the EP and the two albums from we were sound very much like nobody else, but Art Bergman. And I actually had that thought today. I was just like, this is kind of like its own. You've got your own pocket of weird, crabby weirdness now, which is awesome. <laughs> I like it. 
I'll take it. I'll take it, Ben. Crabby weirdness. <laughs> do you uh, do you still believe that music has uh, the power to influence opinion and politics to actually change change things for the better? I guess we got nothing else to try. Right? Nothing else is working. Uh, I have to believe that, or I wouldn't say what I say. It's my my finger, my little flag in the air, my freak flag in the air, hoping that this song is going to change the world. So that, that's my uh, my mo. So uh, at this late stage, I can't uh, I can't think of anything else to do. You know what? That's the perfect place to wrap this up. Thank you so much, Art Bergman, for coming on the Chesterfield. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And the record's fantastic. All your, most of your records are fantastic. I know you, you disagree that all of them are fantastic. So I'll say most of your records are fantastic. Thanks, okay. man. Thank you, Ben. And let's have a virtual coffee next time. Mm -hmm.